Welcome to June's Leak Code Challenge. Today's problem is My Calendar 1. Implement a My Calendar class to store your events. A new event can be added if adding the event will not cause a double booking. Now your class will have the method book with a start and end being the parameter. Formally, this represents a booking on the half open interval start and end. A double booking happens when two events have some non-empty intersection. So that's just a fancy way of saying they overlap. For each call to the method my calendar book, return true if the event can be added uh, to the calendar successfully without causing a double booking. Otherwise, return a false and do not add the event to the calendar. This example here, we could see we're going to book an event from the time 10 to 20. That's going to return a true. Then we're going to try to book 15 to 25, but we already have an event stored from 10 to 20. So this is going to return a false because this overlaps. Uh, but we can also book 20 to 30. That's going to return a true because there is no overlap here. Okay, so they give you a hint. Store the events as a sorted list of intervals. And let's think about what this might entail. Uh, just take our example here. If we wanted to store our events, we can start with storing like 10, 20, right? And let's say we're trying to add 15 to 25. Well, what are we trying to check here? Well, essentially, we're going to try to add this uh, comparing with the end time to the start time that comes right uh, before it. So for instance, if we had, um, let's say, another event here, like 25 to, uh, let's go actually 30 to 40, we would want to uh, check to see at what point does this end time uh, is right before the start time of last event. So right here it would say, oh, it's going to be one, right, index one. So if once we check that, what are we trying to check? We're basically trying to check to see if the start time is in bounds with the one that comes previous to it. So here we can just, yes, we could, uh, we find the index point where uh, this end is right before the start. And then we compare this end, the start time with the end time right before it. And we can see here there's an overlap, right? This 15 is less than the 20, so we can't insert it. So this would just mean we can't insert it and we return a false. 20 to 30, however, um, we can because we'll, we'll say, okay, we want to insert it here right before this index and check our start time. Is it uh, uh, less than the end time here? It's not, it's just, it's right at the end, or they, um, it's inclusive, right? So this counts. We can insert it, and then we insert it, and then we want to sort this. Uh, but rather than doing an insert or append sort, we can just insert it to the index point that, we, that we've calculated. So we're going to do a binary search to find that. What we'll do is take our end time, yeah, our end time that we're trying to enter and find, compare the start time and do a binary search to find which index point that should have come right before. And right after that, we're going to just check to see is our start time uh, greater than, greater or equal to the end time of the one previous. So what about when it's empty? Well, just to avoid that, I'm just going to put kind of just some placeholders here uh, with the minimum st minimum start time that we could have, which would be zero zero, and the uh, maximum end time we could have with like ten to the ninth power. So I'm going to do something like this. All right. So let's begin. Let's first initialize a list and we are going to put in here why well, I guess I just wrote it so it's gonna look like this so next we want to do a binary search to find what point uh, do we want to insert it at so how do we do that so uh, basically we're gonna get L and R which is gonna equal zero and the length of self dot calendar while L is less than R what do we want to do? Let's first calculate the midpoint, L plus R divided by two. So if we find that, uh, let's see, self dot cal mid, and we'll be com comparing the start times here. If we find that our end is equal to uh, this point, then we can actually just uh, set our, mm, let's see, I'm gonna set L equal to mid and mid. immediately break the loop. Else, if end, let's see if it's greater than self dot cal dot mid zero, 
endpoint is greater than the start, then we want to move ahead, right? So our L will equal mid uh, plus one here. Is that right? No, plus one. Else, we're going to make R equal to mid. And this is going to basically guarantee to us that we're going to find this index point at which this end time is uh, right before the start time. Okay, the, the greatest, or yeah, right, the, the one start time that it's uh, right should come right before. Because at this point, the L is what we're checking here. So uh, let's see. So uh, we'll make a note of L is the index point that we need to find. And we're going to check, okay, uh, if the start then is less than self.calendar L endpoint if it's less than that that means there's an overlap so we can return a false immediately and just end it there otherwise that means this is valid so we're going to insert it into our self calendar uh, how do we do this we do uh, mm, insert at index point l and we're going to create a tuple of the start and end and I just forgot, we're checking the last one here. So this will be L minus one actually. So as far as time complexity goes, this is log of N, but this insert becomes N. So actually total becomes O of N. So let's see if this works first. Uh, true, false, false, false. So it didn't work. Let's see. Oh, I got to return true, right? Yeah, so that looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. Oh, I'm surprised that worked. Um, okay, so this is going to be log of n for the binary search, but this insert takes n. So in total, this whole thing is O of n, and we have n number of calls. So unfortunately, this ends up becoming an n squared time complexity. Uh, space complexity, we have our calendar, so that's going to be O of n. Now, if you want to improve this to a n log n solution, we would have to figure out some way to make this entire thing log of n. But unfortunately, to do that, you would need some sort of special data structure, like a sorted list or a binary index tree. And it just seemed like overkill for this problem, especially given that there's only a thousand calls. Um, and plus, I'm just not really that familiar with that kind of thing. So I think I'm just going to go with this solution. You can certainly look up the binary index tree solution, uh, but I found it to be just confusing and not really worth it for this specific problem. Maybe one day I will go back and uh, look at more binary index tree solutions. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.